Our help is in the name of the Lord who hath made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, bless this incense and shock, which we offer you after the pattern of the Magi from the East, who acknowledge Jesus Christ, as the exalted high priest, king of life, and prophet of truth. Grant that encouraged by the example of the Magi, we may tirelessly follow the light of Christ's teaching, for he is the way, the truth, and the life, our source of eternal joy. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, the wise men sought you out. You revealed yourself to them in the person of Jesus Christ. Through the same Jesus Christ, you summoned all nations to a knowledge of you. Instill in our hearts and minds a blessed yearning to possess truth. Grant that all homes marked with the names of the wise men during the Epiphany season may be habitations worthy of you and sanctuaries of Christian virtue. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon this holy fire, and may our prayers be heard by God our Father. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon these gifts of charcoal, incense, and chalk and remain with those who partake of them now and forever. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. that we may worthily participate 
in this holy sacrifice. And now, please make an examination of conscience. <clears throat> And now, let us recite the second form of the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that have sinned and thought word and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault, I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority, Vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The messenger of the covenant, of whom you desire, yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory to God in the highest peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God of hosts, by a star you guided the Magi, to worship your Son, and through them receive the homage of all nations. Grant that we may worship him, presenting our gifts of love, loyalty, and service. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. First reading is the reading of the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the people. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, 
and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant <clears throat> at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the city shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravan of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from <coughs> Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba, shall come bearing gold and frankincense, proclaiming the praises of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 72, 1, 2, 7, 8, 10, 11, and 12, 13. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, <clears throat> with your judgment and now the king, and with your justice the king's son, he shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace, till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. <coughs> A reading from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs and members of the same body and co-partners in the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> Yours, O Lord, are grandeur and power, majesty, splendor, and glory. For all in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the sound. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Riches and honor are from you, and you have dominion over all. In your hand our power and might. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod. Behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophets, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, 
are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is a shepherd, my, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that had been seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They presented themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. We have seen his star and have come to worship him. These words taken from today's Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 2, verse 2. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we gather on the solemnity of the epiphany of our Lord Jesus Christ. It comes on the 12th day of Christmas. Today, the Eastern Orthodox Church celebrates its Christmas. It is a time when we read from the Gospel according to Matthew about the Magi those in search of the King of the Jews. This story has a very special significance, for it is the first time that gifts were presented unto the Christ child, and their importance brings a fuller understanding of the role of the Promised One, the Christos, the Anointed One of God. Who were these wise men from the East? It is believed that they came from either Persia or Arabia, possibly Yemen. Albert Edersheim in his book, The Life and Times of Jesus the Messiah, written in 1883, <laughs> describes them as possibly originating from the diaspora <coughs> that being the survivors from the enslavement under the Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar, who destroyed the temple in Jerusalem in 586 BC. And upon their release, the people migrated throughout the Middle East. Another theory is that they were priests, seers of the ancient religion 
a Zoroastrian. The Magi were considered as priests and seers from this religion, one of the oldest religions who believed in a one God. And this religion found its roots in Persia 2,000 years before the birth of Christ. It is well known that their priests were well educated in astrology and would have understood the meaning of the special star. In Christian tradition, they are referred to as the three kings, although it is never stated that they were. It is believed, according to Matthew's Gospel, that they were not present at the Nativity of Jesus, but they came much later. In Matthew, we read that they entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. There is no reference to Joseph. Now the gifts they offered unto the Christ child had two purposes. First, they had value. Gold speaks for itself. But frankincense was a very valuable resin used in religious ceremonies throughout the known world. Likewise, myrrh was valuable in that it was used for many things, mostly for the embalming of the deceased. In the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse 39, it is written that after the death of Jesus, when they took him to the place where he was laid, Nicodemus came at night with a mixture of myrrh and aloe weighing approximately 100 pounds. The second purpose of these gifts, it is believed to have given financial support to Joseph, his wife Mary, and the child Jesus as they fled Bethlehem into Egypt to escape the wrath of King Herod until his death. It should be pointed out that these gifts were to define the essence of the Messiah. According to the Jewish faith, based on Holy Scripture and the prophets, this Messiah would serve two main purposes. He first would be a king to rule. The second was that this Messiah would be the high priest, offering sacrifices for his people. The gold represents the kingship of Jesus. The frankincense represents the divinity of Christ. Throughout the early Christian church, there was much debate about the nature of Jesus. Was he a pure spirit or was he just a man? This was to be answered by the one holy Catholic and apostolic church of the undivided church at the first ecumenical church council held in the city of Nicaea in 325 AD. The gifts of frankincense and myrrh were to represent the two perfect natures of Jesus, God and man. Frankincense again to represent his divinity and the myrrh to represent his humanity. Thus, as John declares in his gospel, the Word became flesh. His humanity was also important, for the Messiah was to come out of the root of Jesse. Not too many people know who Jesse was. Jesse was the father of King David, and the prophets wrote that Jesus was to come from the house of David. As we officially come to the close of the Christmas story, many will take down their decorations. We reflect that at Christmas, gifts were exchanged with our families and friends. As we look at the crush of Jesus in the Holy Family, the question is asked, what gift 
do you have to offer the Christ child this epiphany? Is he the King of Kings and Lord of Lords in your life? We believe there is two births of Jesus. One that took place in Bethlehem, in the city of David, 2,000 years ago, as prophesied. The second is the birth of Christ within oneself. Does not St. Paul make this declaration in his letter to the Galatians, chapter 2, verse 20, who states, It is not I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. Understand that in today's world, there are many King Herods who would and who have killed the Christ child in the hearts and minds and souls of many. On this epiphany, my brothers and sisters, let us reflect on this thought. Although we may not have gold, frankincense, and myrrh to offer the Christ child this day, we have a far more greater gift to offer, that of ourselves, in acknowledging that indeed Christ Jesus is the Lord of Lord, the King of Kings, and our own personal Savior. May we allow that inner star to guide us to worship the Lord in our lives, now and for the rest of our days. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memories we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. In mercy, Lord our God, look upon the oblation of your church this day. No longer do we offer gold, frankincense, and myrrh, the gifts of earth. Rather, we sacrifice and receive him who is the gift of heaven. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family. And so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it might be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At this solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do these things, do them in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest offered you, a holy sacrifice in immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant we pray a blessing of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy. Some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with laws patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, Revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him, 
All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ your son our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity and the Holy Spirit for forever and ever may the peace of the Lord be with you always mingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and the holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen.
What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. O sacred banquet, memorial of the Last Supper, in which our Savior gives himself to be food for mankind, and in the deepest truth unites himself with them, hear our prayers have been sent this day to thy majesty, that as many of us shall receive from the sacred altar the body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ of the Lord.
You love justice and hate wrongdoing. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellow kings, with myrrh, aloe, and cassia. Your robes are fragrant. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God our Father, by the shining of a star, you guided the Magi to behold your Son, Jesus. Show us your heavenly light and strengthened by the way bread of the altar, giving us grace to follow him, follow him until we find him and finding him to rejoice. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. to you most holy trinity grant that the sacrifice which we the unworthy have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it through christ our lord amen may the almighty and merciful god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit amen. the lord be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found a life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten, not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. adoration of the most blessed sacrament. I bring to mind that this afternoon at 2 o'clock at St. Valentine's Polish National Catholic Church in Northampton, there will be a Polish sing-along uh, kalendi. I actually had a chance to print up a couple of the uh, programs, so please consider coming and sharing. It is really a, a moving time, and I have participated in the past years and it is greatly enjoyable. I do bring to mind this week I will be traveling down to Florida to spend time with my family in the bulletin I put that if there are any unforeseen emergencies God forbid that you please either call Father Adam Chodronewski or Father Senior Joseph Soltyshock 
and both of their phone numbers are included in today's bulletin. With that being said, next Sunday, January 13th, on the solemnity of the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Mass will be celebrated here at 11 o'clock in the morning, and it will be celebrated by the Reverend Father Adam Czarnecki, the pastor of St. Valentine's Polish National Catholic Church. I will be traveling down about uh, two and a half hours to, uh, to spend uh, next Sunday with Father Mark Nishnik, uh, who is in Belleville, uh, Florida. Uh, Mark actually was the third um, boy to be ordained to the priesthood that came from Chigabee. Father Senior Banash was the first, I was the second, and Father Mark was the third. I do bring to mind that today, as you were able to witness, the blessing of the chalk and the incense. I have um, tiny packets, and uh, please, following the Mass today, please come forward, uh, take some of the blessed chalk, as well as incense, and if you want, charcoal. Again, this is a Polish tradition that goes back many, many years and would like to share with all of you. Are there any other announcements I failed to mention? None being said, then let us now offer a final prayer. And again, I'm going to go to the back of the church. Please come forward. Uh, my brother Wayne will uh, give, an, uh, give you a hand to, to actually give you chalk and give you incense and charcoal. God bless all of you in this new year, and the good Lord watch over all of us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <coughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.